done a certain way. How do you communicate that with your guides? Well, there is, there, we, we do the courses with maximum eight. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a standard material, like scripts, where we, which we give them and say, look, this is a, a form. Adapt it to your own, uh, own style. Kick out something, some parts, bring in others. But then we, we check it on, on like, we, we, we don't take just, yeah, here is some material, study and go. Of course, it's a process where we have to find out how, how they perform on them and, and how they do that because some may, maybe not be that motivated. They just thought, think it's just another job and those, they probably fail when we, when we test them because it's more than just another job. You need really to study and find out how and, and find your personality, how, find your way how to do it. We start with, we have many different tours, so they start with one tour. Uh, which you need with an easier one, just half a day tour, and uh, do their first experience and uh, uh, dynamic of the group, all, all that. And then they go step by step to the other ones. And from time to time, we send someone who checks them and gives them feedback. I think it's not just going and check them how they do their work, but giving them uh, feedback how, how what they could uh, improve, what others do. So. There is some mystery shoppers, which they probably don't know, but there is also the, the quality managers who go more often to the tours, uh, to different guys, and then they can also find out, what, oh, you're, you're that kind of guy. Look, there, there is another one similar to you, but he, he applies uh, certain things different and could be good for you. So, awesome. Constructive feedback. And excuse me, what is your company? Uh, we, we call Best of Switzerland Tours. Oh. Actually, that's a good habit. If you ever speak, uh, say your name and the company you work Sorry. for again, so we can all uh, learn. That's a really good point. Um, so you touched upon so many really important things here, and I'm curious to hear from all of you. How many? When you're thinking about your, how many people have guides working for them? How many people work just for themselves? They don't have guides working for them. Okay, so there's a handful. Awesome. At some point, you guys will probably hire people pretty cool. soon. So um, this will hopefully be more relevant. But for those of you that have guides, um, how many of you? just teach kind of the logistics of your tour and then you kind of maybe do a shadow and then send them out is that is that uh, a common training or do, do most people do more than that so uh, you pretty much do this yeah, sometimes you guys as well yeah, it's like time a year right yeah. 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 <laughs> you just hire them and it's july next week and it's okay yeah. Fair enough. you can talk so <laughs> yeah. uh, i got uh, what one uh, from the french boy he told me if it's a nice looking lady and she has a good smile, I can send her, I, I, I don't care. <laughs> she, she never gets bad feedback. Uh, so we know better. Sometimes it comes later. But for those of you that have a tough training like this, do you find um, common challenges with those guides later? Do they end up making mistakes or do you feel like they're pretty well set up and generally succeed when they go out there in the field? I'm not sure. Yeah, huh? problem. It's usually a problem. Yeah, and I think it's because, I mean, it's a great way to learn. You're, you're giving them real experience. You often put them on more the, the simple tours and maybe the special private tours go to the more senior people. Um, but you mentioned something that's a great uh, skill set in general uh, that we should be employing in our businesses, which is to leverage the expertise uh, around us. And if you think of your teams, if you think of your, your best performing guides, you kind of wish you could clone them and then have really consistently awesome tours all the time. And then you hire new people, and it takes a couple years. They eventually get there, but those couple years can be a struggle. You see that, you know, three-star review pop up, and you're like, "Damn, like mm -hmm. this really sucks." But uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can really leverage um, these kind of people on your team. And you kind of mentioned uh, a, a couple things where you can have them shadow a tour, and maybe they learn as they hear the most experienced guides speaking. Does anybody have any other ideas of how you might leverage the more senior people to help your newer? Guides grow. Well, we have certain steps. We are not, you know, they start with shadowing uh, an experienced person, and then uh, they get a script. Uh, we have a Facebook group, then they, they can, uh, you know, uh, ask any questions, for challenges, whatever. And then we uh, then we do a tour. Usually, I do them with them, just uh, give them feedback, and uh, before they do their like uh, first. You person. Yes. Okay. I try to make sure that every person like. If, like, you know, your friend in Reykjavik kind of, kind of is like a, you know, 
it needs to be a personal and that thing, small group tour, so uh, I need to make sure that they can convey that message or that uh, warmth, so to speak. And then after they've finished their first couple tours, do you go back later in the year and do that again? Yes, uh, I shadow them again, yes. Okay, yeah. and do you, you tell them ahead of time or do you just show up? I, sh I just show up. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Anybody else, any other ideas? We have, we have an issue with the private tours because when we have a private tours, it's, I mean, it's difficult to send uh, somebody to the uh, new people to watch the uh, experience guide. So I don't know if you have some uh, advices and uh, experience, but in reality, uh, as we have like 70% of the tours are private, so we we cannot do like this training. So. Maybe you have some ideas, but what, what do you guys think? Uh, uh, How would you guys uh, address something like that? If, if you can't go on the tour to actually shadow, how how would you go about getting feedback about your guides? Surveys. Surveys. Asking people how was the tour. Mm -hmm. Asking them directly. Them after the tour, just ask personally mm -hmm. how was the tour. I mean, uh, you can have a feedback, but you cannot send the yeah, young, yeah. I mean, the not experienced guide to to work with. Work with mm -hmm. the Usually, we uh, put this new guide as assistance to the uh, experience guide and share it. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, then the, there is a moment when you have to trust and send him, <laughs> just uh, uh, yeah. hope that it will yeah. be okay. But once I sent like this uh, for one tour where there was my friend with whom I was studying, like very important for me to work, and then I was with another guest, and I saw we were in one national park together. I saw that this guide with the group, they are descending the canyon in a very dangerous place. And he absolutely knew 100% that it's not allowed to go there. He was there with other guides and he knew. But he just thought that no one is no one seeing. And I was shocked when I saw my hair start to you know, move around. <laughs> and uh, I just, uh, later, we just changed the guide immediately. It was busy season. We, hardly found the guide, but it was such a negative experience for me. Um, and guests started to complain me. I met them just right after, and they were like complaining, complaining. I thought, so good that I met them personally in this canyon, because if I would not see this, uh, they would go to the city, they would write five bad reviews <laughs> on TripAdvisor, exactly. just because of this one guy. That, that's a perfect example, and I think any touch points you can make where you can find out more about the guest's experience, um, that those are great opportunities. So either a survey, you can also check, of course, the, the main survey sites to see what reviews that people have left you. Um, you can plant yourself in the office and wait for people and start the conversation with like, how was your day today? How was everything? Um, you can, if you have subcontractors or suppliers, you can ask them also to give you feedback on the guys and how is everything Travis. going? Drivers, if you have drivers, absolutely. Um, colleagues, sometimes, you know. Also, a great practice is to create, the, um, I don't know if any of you do this, but maybe uh, team nights, where you just bring people together, you casually hang out, and it gives people a chance to uh, talk about their challenges and, and give feedback. You can sometimes make it anonymous if you think it's a, okay for your company culture. Now, but there, there are many different opportunities. The key takeaway, though, is if, if you're not yet collecting feedback for your guides, it's really, such a great practice to help your guides grow. It's help, helping them coach and hopefully making your tours more consistent and, re and really raising the quality overall. Um, someone else, yeah. I would like to uh, add to that. We had a similar experience in Kyrgyzstan. And as you know, we're a training tour guide company as well. And we never train on national uh, regulations. Like we only train soft skills and who you are as a guide, what you are saying what is your strength within the boundaries of your product. And I wanted to make two things because guiding can be a very dangerous job. Anybody realizes that? Sure. In Iran, for example, you have about 3,000 guides that are allowed to work with foreign people and about 300 that are allowed to work with Americans and UK people. You always have a shadower with you as a guide and this shadower is going to take notes. And you have to, every night, make a trip report and give to this gentleman who is shadowing 
because they want to know what you're saying. If what you're saying is wrong or controversial, you have a problem. So this is the most extreme and dangerous. But the other thing is, and especially since you're in Kazakhstan and we're working in Central Asia and Mongolia as well, many tour guides, and you send them all on, uh, on trips, they don't realize what their own risks are. They do not know how they are insured. We went also to Siberia and, and that kind of areas and so on, fabulous. But the guides, when we are there, they have no clue what their rights are and how they are insured when something happens. And I think as tour operators, this is a big thing for you guys because also many of ourselves, we don't realize that this is a danger, not only for the guide, not only for the guests, but also for yourself. And I think that's a point where people think like, training, it's too much, costs too much, the people are not committed, depends. I think there is two sides to all of this, so. I think, sorry, uh, I think tour guides, uh, uh, I imagine them as a first line of defense. You know, they are infantry, yeah, they're linking people, they are yeah. infantry. you know, they are yeah. cannon yeah. meat, yes. you know what I, that, so they are the ones do. who die first, yeah. you know, when, when, you know, in military, you know, yeah, know. <laughs> so, can for, uh, can, can it's can quite for important them. for them uh, to feel important, because it's, uh, it's difficult, if you are an infantry soldier, you are important, but no one, you know, takes you seriously, you know, as a cannon or as something, yeah, so, yeah. I used just one parallel. I used to work as a guide for a company called G Adventures. You heard about yeah, yeah, G yeah, Adventures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like skipper for them, skippering boats around the Adriatic. And we we had trainings. Of course, it's a big global company, and we went to seminars how to teach, how to guide, how to everything. But the first thing, what was important, they did not call us uh, guides. We were CEOs. I meant what, what CEO, I'm a CEO, Chief Experience Officer. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's yeah. a cheap trick, but it made us yeah. feel important. important. You know, we are not guides, we are CEOs all of a sudden, you know. <laughs> and then you feel like this infantry soldier, you feel like you're the boss of the company, but you're not. <laughs> So it's a, it's a cheap trick, but it works, you know. It didn't work for me because I worked at one season and then I found my own business. But no, I, uh, you know, I, did, I did not take it seriously, the CEO title. Yeah, yeah. yeah you are still CEO. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what the name is because you can be called a house cleaning or a cleaning lady or an interior you are designer. Wrong. You are yeah. wrong. But the, the guides need to be treated like the most important Absolutely. factors yes. of the company yeah. because they are. Yeah. They're the one who yeah. die. I'm not dying. Yeah. No, they are dying. Yeah. Yeah. So I really appreciate yeah. this analogy. Yeah, I, do um, I, I did a master's degree, and as part of it, they did a lot of case studies. And one of the case studies was about Napoleon Bonaparte being uh, really effective early in his career and then what led to his downfall essentially. And if you boil all the pieces back, why, why the end the end fail? I mean, definitely circumstances in the Russian winter were not helpful. But one of the key differences was that in the beginning, he empowered his generals to make their own decisions. And later in his career, he was very authoritative, isolated himself, and people were afraid of making their own decisions. And I would argue the same analogy is really true for our tours and our tour companies because if your guides are going out there and they're empowered to make decisions, they're empowered to handle things that go wrong when they go wrong, yes, yeah. they will be able to act faster, represent your company faster, and avoid a lot of pitfalls that could lead to really bad reviews and, and bad guest experiences. But if, if you can bring a training program together to help prepare people and your guides, your frontline soldiers, to deal with the issues as they come along, your company, I think, will be more successful in the long term. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and just to bring it back briefly to empower, there's a lot of different ways you can build a training program. I think a lot of you are doing the shadowing, which is really important. They're seeing the actual tours, they're learning the logistics. But I want you maybe all to think about your businesses and think about what are the most important elements of my tour. Of course, it's sharing the information, it's going the routes, but how do you want your guides to be with your guests? What do you want them to be like, personality-wise, uh, they're gonna be individuals, 
Um, but what kind of service should they be providing to your guests? Um, if something goes wrong, and you, if, if you have something that's going wrong regularly, uh, to actually nip that in the bud and think about it ahead of time to avoid those mistakes in the future, because you know they're gonna happen over and over again. Let's say a guest is late all the time. Some of your guys deal with it well, some maybe not so well. Um, but if you can teach those guys to deal with it well all the time, that's no longer gonna become an issue or much less uh, of an issue for you. Um, but I was thinking back uh, to our original, one of the questions earlier, which was how you can leverage more senior people on your team, including yourselves. And one company I worked for did a really interesting thing. They would take the entire crew on the route of the tour. And they would go, and either they would randomly decide, you do the stop here, and then everybody gives feedback, and then they learn from each other, or you just ask everybody, what's your favorite thing to say here, or your favorite thing to do here? Um, and then they have a chance to, to share, and all of a sudden, people are gaining new information, they're getting excited, they're learning from each other. It creates a sense of team, which is good, but also it's raising the bar of the less experienced guides to get closer to the, the more ideal guide that is maybe more experienced. Um, additionally, what I would recommend is sitting around with your team at some point and saying, hey, let's just talk about how the season's going. Well, tell me about your best experiences out there. What was some of the best things that you've done on tour that you've experienced? Because that idea that they share might be something that the other guides start doing on their tours to make their tours better. On the flip side, you might also ask, what are the worst experiences you have? Or are you having common problems that are happening? And then people are like, yeah, every time I go to the Brandon Brigade, it's so damn crowded, no one can hear what I'm saying. Someone's like, oh, just go across the street and then talk from there. And then you're like, oh my God, I have to not think of that. But, but if, if you give the opportunity for these moments of feedback, you're gonna give your guides the opportunity to grow. So it's really important to bring them into your business if you haven't already. Um, uh, one thing to think about. The other thing to start thinking about too is, is your training program in general. Uh, so you think about all the elements that you want to be teaching your guides and your team. And are you addressing those things? Do you have time to address those things? Um, have you even thought about what, what that might mean for your tours? Um, because again, most of you probably started your businesses yourself and you have a very good idea, but maybe you didn't put it on paper. You put down the information that you share. But there's a lot of things that happen in between that maybe are really important that you do that haven't been shared with your team yet. Um, are there any big challenges that any of you are facing right now with your guides? You know, I have a really experienced guy that I know he does tours for a couple of companies and I know he's you know, he has more experience than me. And uh, still he's not getting reviews. You know, he, does, he doesn't get bad reviews, he just, just doesn't get reviews. You know. uh, while I have a young, inexperienced guy that really gets five-star reviews every time he does a tour. So I'm just wondering how I could help that guy to Push, push the envelope, make the make the switch to uh, to make people uh, leave a review. I have been like been like you know should uh, like uh, do something uh, have a little bit of a trick in the end. Well, you said uh, you know we have a business card that we leave that uh, that is a uh, the sign over here. It's an old magical sign called the Wayfinder or the Viking Compass. So according to uh, Icelandic magic, uh, the wearer of this sign always finds his way to bad weather or bad circumstances. So it's a protection sign of sorts. People have it like a tattoo or a necklace or something like that. So I'm going to give you this business card. Mm -hmm. But I have to warn you that if you don't leave me a review, uh, you know, <laughs> magic fades. <laughs> so I, so I, it's, it's an inclination to get people to leave a review. And um, you know, I've been trying to think that things, all, all, all kinds of stuff, but uh, for some reason he doesn't like get reviews, so I'm, you know, I'm curious, how, how would you motivate a, a really experienced guy that I know does a quite a good job, but for some reason he's, he's not, you know. Yeah. What do you think, any advice? Well, I try to motivate them with cash. <laughs> 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 I was giving like 15 euros for each uh, good review. Okay. But then they gather together and say, boss, this is not a good idea, <laughs> you know. Um, it, it's a diff I told you about the story. It, it's, um, but uh, what I think that he is, he doesn't want to get reviews because he's afraid of the bad review that he could get. It's a problem of self-esteem. Um, because for him in his mind, it's better not to have anything that, than to have one bad. Mm. So you need to talk with him and explain him, okay, people are not uh, uh, judging you, uh, finding your, your bad spots but good spots 
it's there will be a bad review in the future definitely but you need to relax you know i'm not going to fire you because of a bad review so you need to approach him like uh, I, I sincerely doubt that uh, uh, is he an older guy yeah he, well he's 55. okay well okay but because many of of uh, people that age were taught that if you get a review it is always negative and today the reviews are mostly positive and I think I'm, I'm also in that age group for sure. And I think that very often people, they, what you're saying is, is very much going to be true, but the, the part of how they were trained as a, as a kid, uh, getting a feedback is always bad, may paralyze him. And on the other side, if you get reviews, and I do that very often sometimes, I think like I work with people that are sometimes almost like getting dementia and then I think like what good is a review or they have been drinking the whole day and they're totally drink and drunk and then they say I'm excellent or I'm totally fair you know I cannot put any um, weight to that one but in general if they are like thinking that every review is actually a control tool for you like Mr. X is doing this or that then then you have a yeah, talking issue with a conversation. Yeah, but I, we have a Facebook group where when I, when, I, when I share reviews and after a month I, I collect the best reviews and talk about it a little bit. And I've, I've tried to uh, make the months where you can pay the guys a little bit extra for, for reviews and stuff like that. So so I think I've made it really clear that, you know, uh, and I've talked about negative reviews. I've, I have a couple. But, uh, and, uh, you know, say, you know, and, and try to diagnose what why that came to be and uh, how we can do better and stuff like that. So I think the knowledge of uh, to be scared about getting a bad review is not the problem. It's, it's more of a, like a, some kind of a motivation thing, or you know, for him to really step step up and, and, and try to get people to leave. And it doesn't only it doesn't have to be a personal review about himself, but the person is also. The company of the experience, yeah. the company maybe he's embarrassed to ask for a review about himself as a person, but he could ask for a review of the whole experience. So, I, don't know. I think in general we have, uh, I mean, we have uh, 83 or half freelance tour guides, 40 time tour guides. So we have to accept that some guides get very yeah. frequent review and others they just, just don't get. And uh, that's, that's yes, why I'm I feel it's, it's uh, about the personality of the person. Um, that doesn't mean they are uh, not a good guide and the other one is an excellent guide who gets a lot of reviews. Yeah, I think that sometimes it's not dependent on if you ask review or if you don't ask review. They're just, just in my experience that there are there's some people who's probably like very emotional and they natural they don't ask for review but they get reviews anyway but there are some people who is really professional who's doing a good tour but maybe the personality is like this that yeah. people don't yeah. uh, leave the review for them. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that the, the reviews things are very polarized today um, that that people either remember the exceptional or the horrible thing that happened. The, the things in between, the normal, are easily forgettable. So then you, you have to, I don't know, to, to see when, when your tour guy is doing this tour, is it something exceptional? Okay, can it be exceptional? Or is it something that tomorrow I will already forgotten about it? I think some guys also don't like to risk like Correct. They it's think that, oh, I don't do. I'm not sure if you're okay or not. I better do some average, not bad. Asthmatic, <laughs> very emotional. He plays musical instruments. <laughs> He's like super guy who should like collect a lot of uh, reviews. And I know him myself. He's a friend of mine. He's a really interesting person. But so we don't have any, I think, uh, review. We don't have any bad. Like reviews for him, but also no good. And I know some other guys who are not so like excited, excited like him, but yeah. they get reviews too. You know what I found out? Sorry, 
the guys who don't get reviews are the guys who get the most tips. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't care about reviews. Okay? They just show the, the, like this, you know, by the end of the tour, or put down the hat and they get money and they don't care to, to tell you, you know, leave us a review. So said, give me some money, don't, yes. don't, don't give me yes. <laughs> This is the, uh, by the way, I don't know, I'm not also interested in this because for us it's a it's about certification kind of issue for guides. And now there is a new law which is discussed here. So we, actually what now is the situation now? In, uh, it, it's different around uh, cities. For example, St. Petersburg, they, yeah. most of the guides are certified yeah. guides. So yeah, sure. actually, 99% and there is no problem. there is a lot of them and all of them certified if you go to us to Moscow uh, there is a association of the guide who um, like certified uh, guide but it's not fully kind of so you still have uh, uh, you still uh, have a possibility to be the guide but not have this accreditation of the uh, but you, in this case, you cannot, for example, go to Kremlin because you didn't pass a special, mm. special uh, KGB check. Special, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. real. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. because uh, they want the to KGB all of this guy to be kind of uh, standardized <laughs> and have the special check, including, uh, yeah. Yeah. including, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we, we, and there is issue because if you, if you, we have a very good guide. They're very passionate guides, but they are not uh, members of this association. And this is the new law coming, which they want to to start to have a federal law yeah. for all the countries, so and including Moscow and Saint Petersburg. And uh, these associations, like a mono, uh, they want want to monopolize all this certification. Yeah. So for the moment, we kind of manage the situation because. Uh, yeah, because we have the, we have a uh, like for big groups we uh, we take the guides from these associations, but we usually don't have a good reviews from them. This is just a, a guide, like professional guide, but he is working for many com many companies and he's not really passionate about. It. So, so a, thank you for bringing that up because yeah. I think yeah. this is something that uh, yeah. really ties us together super well. Yeah. Um, I would, I'll say two things. One is that. Um, we we work together with numerous Italian companies that have really been challenged by this because yeah. they require having uh, certified guides. Yeah. They often find that the guides are not very good guides. They mm -hmm. show up, they have the certification which they need, but they are they know the dates, but they're not good storytellers. They're not good tour yeah. guides. They yeah. never learn those skills, but they think I've been certified, so I'm a great guide. Yeah. And so I think this is why, especially why, it's really important to have a culture of feedback um, and training in your company. Uh, but we're talking about um, the fact that he's not getting feedback, and I think many points that were brought up around the, the group is that people feel anxious because they feel their job is dependent on that feedback. And if they get bad reviews, then they might get fired. Um, if they get really good reviews, maybe get make, paid more money, and they want to actually ask their family members to write in, and mm -hmm. you know, who knows what they're going to do. Um, but if you can build a culture where it's not necessarily around getting hired or fired or promoted or fired, but instead about learning and growing and improving and that it's is with their best growth and future, and in, uh, it's with the best intention, and mean it authentically. It's not just saying, it's really creating a culture of feedback and growing and learning, and not making your guides feel anxious. It gives them an opportunity to grow. And so if you hire people like this, they're not coming in and saying, I'm amazing at my job. You're saying, hey, we're all vulnerable here. Let's, let's go through the feedback occasionally and see like, wh wh what do you think your greatest opportunities are to grow? And then it shouldn't be about the numbers, it should be more about the qualitative feedback that you see along the way. So if you're seeing regular reviews, even if they get five stars, they might say, you know, like, yeah, it was a good tour. They're like, well, is there room for improvement if you have a five star review and it says it was a good tour? Like, what do you guys think? Yes, there is. Yeah, right? You yeah. know, it could be yeah. a great tour, the most amazing tour of my life. But that requires a bit of finesse because if you leave it to the guides, the guides will often see five stars, but I'm great at what I do, I'm the best. Um, but they don't realize that this is a tremendous opportunity to grow. And so as you guys all uh, think about your businesses, uh, think about creating a culture of feedback as well. And I think part of that is also inviting feedback in different ways. One thing you can do is maybe 
make it mandatory at the end to ask uh, for feedback if he's not doing it. But I think what, what might be more effective is making it part of your business. Maybe it's emailing the, the guests after the trip is over. Uh, but it's also, there's two things happening. One is that you guys want your reviews on the sites. So people see the five star reviews and, and they want to go on your tours. But the other part is how you use your feedback internally. So really think about, uh, even if they're not writing it on TripAdvisor or somewhere else, that you might be collecting it somewhere else so you can help your guides actually grow and get better over time uh, to improve your business. Um, 